The Converted Man here. It's The Converted Man. The Converted. The Converted. The Converted. The Converted. The Converted. The Converted Man here. Apologetics 101. How can we believe in a God who allows evil and suffering? It was embarrassing. Two humanists on the panel were having a collective nightmare. As we discoursed on the nature of evidence, creation, the Bible, they were struggling more and more to make a coherent case for their atheism. Until at last, one cracked, red-faced, and angry, he just blurted out, How can you believe in a God who allows suffering? It wasn't the subject of the evening, but this was his last desperate attempt to justify not believing in the God of the Bible. And I'm totally going to prove that exists by showing you that video. Oh, no. No, they're not. There's no video? How about a transcript? Nope. Who were you debating? Who are these humanists on this panel? Don't know. Just going to have to believe you about that little thing that you put out there. God is all-powerful, so he could destroy evil and prevent suffering. God is good, so would want to destroy evil and suffering. Evil and suffering exist, so the good and all-powerful God does not exist. Well, actually, I would change the third one. I would say that that God that has good and or is all-powerful could not exist, given that there is pain, evil, and or suffering. Or he strawmans the bleep out of atheists. He doesn't talk about suffering as much as he does evil. Evil becomes the focus, and suffering's kind of put on the side. Uh, and evil is put on the focus because some atheists, some agnostics, some skeptics, some philosophers have said that evil is a construct, that it doesn't really exist other than a social idea. And so the writer is going to use that and ignore the suffering part. We all agree that suffering is a thing that you can do regardless of whether evil is a thing. Uh, suffering is a biological thing that can happen to people and animals. I don't know about plants, but definitely animals uh, of all kinds. They can, If they can feel pain, then they can feel pain, and that's unpleasant. And there is no excuse for suffering that I know of in the theistic worldview. But rather than just say, here's why God allows these things, or here's why uh, those things exist, instead what this writer is going to do is complain about the atheists, their worldview, their view of things, uh, what they believe, how they believe, and all this sort of cherry-picking, straw-manning, red-herring constructs and going after n nothing that would compel any skeptic ever, it isn't, it isn't my view that evil is nothing more than a social construct. Uh, I am open to that possibility, but I don't have any strong stance regarding if evil is or isn't a thing in a, at all. It is a word, it is a definition, it is an idea that exists in our mind, and I'm open to the possibility that it could exist more than just as that sort of construct, or more than a social construct, as a description of something witnessed in that sense. Uh, I, I don't have a logical argument one way or the other for evil, so I'm content to let it be what it is, and not add anything more or take anything away from it that, that I feel it needs to have. But that's my position. It's not going to be the position of a different atheist because there is no one position. So the problem for the atheist is something that we should just skip because there isn't a single problem. In fact, there isn't a problem at all. And this article complains... Uh, by using Dawkins, don't care what Dawkins said, doesn't matter. It's a cherry-picked quote from a book, a River Out of Eating, a Darwinian View of Life. No page number is given for where he says this in the book, so we can't, you know, easily look it up. He says that this is the atheist view, that there's no good, no evil, 
nothing but pitiless indifference. No, that's Dawkins' view at best. And then he complains about Nietzsche, uh, again, quoting a book, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, but not giving us the page number. And here we have stuff about C.S. Lewis, don't care, gonna skip that. All right, so what about suffering? Good, finally, we get back to the part of suffering because we're going to complain about evil, now we're going to talk about suffering. Fine. So, after giving us an analogy about suffering and stuff, he says, well, when I go to the dentist, the needle in my mouth is suffering, but it's for a clearer and better purpose. So the atheist immediately asks, what about pointless suffering? Before he goes on, I want to interject this. Here's the problem. You don't even understand the problem. That's, that's the problem. That's the real problem. Here's the actual analogy. You go to a dentist who has at their disposal the ability to make it so that you will not feel pain before, during, or after the procedure at all. It's not even a case of numbing you, uh, which the, that needle can hurt. It is something that they can give you that's absolutely painless to receive. And that will last until you're fully healed so that you'll have zero pain during the procedure, after the procedure, as your body takes over and naturally heals what it can. And it will be completely without complication or allergies or anything at all. If the dentist had that at, his, at, at their disposal... And instead went with the painful method. You would not go to that dentist. You would go to the dentist that would give you the the stuff that didn't hurt. You would never ever go to the dentist that didn't do that. If you had the ability to choose between the two. If they both had the same prices. They were both nearby. You would choose every time the dentist that didn't inflict the suffering. There is no way that we as a society would support and or endorse the dentist that did not choose the less painful method every single time. It goes for doctors, it goes for psychologists, it goes for whatever field you want to plug in. The best way to build that building is X. Well, that's what we're going to go with then. We're not going to go with the, the weirdest, most expensive way to build that building. We're going to go with the most efficient, cost-efficient, safest way to build that building that still makes that building just as good as any other building, if not better, every single time, unless we're corrupt or greedy or whatever. But uh, as a whole, we aim for the best of the best without the pain and suffering part. You're telling me that a deity that has more power and ability than any of us combined, supposedly, will not do the thing that we would demand of that dentist, doctor, architect, etc. Bull crap. Your deity cannot exist in reality. If we do it, and we do it better, your deity is a piece of crap if it did exist, which it can't. Because your deity could stop all of that pain. All suffering is pointless. All of it is pointless. The only reason I feel pain when I hit into something is for my survival a deity didn't have to make us uh, it, it, mortal. A deity could have made us not physical in the first place. If angels, which are in the Bible, know absolutely that there's a God and can still decide to say, screw you, God, and now they go to a different place that God creates just for them or whatever, depending on which version of Christianity you, you subscribe to, that may or may not be your uh, theology. But nonetheless, if an angel can say no to God, then why couldn't I? Why 
couldn't I have the spiritual form that an angel has, have absolute knowledge that God exists, and have that choice just like the angels do? There is no reason that that is not the optimal world because I don't have any suffering there. And I have the only choice that supposedly matters of accepting or not accepting God. But yet, that's not the world that we have. And the reason is because your deity cannot, does not exist. The rest of the article is more cherry-picked quotes from other people never given any citations for, never were given the book numbers of, and then goes to the problem of evil for the Christian where he gives an uh, outright lie that God didn't create evil because it's not created. Uh, wrong. God created evil. It's in the Bible. It says that God creates evil. That God permits evil but brings evil greater good out of that evil that's a bull crap answer i i don't buy that for a moment again going back to the dentist even if the dentist knew everything that there was to know about teeth what possible justification could they have for making you go through the painful procedure instead of the the simpler one and and further if we're going to say that this deity knows everything and has way more power than any of us ever could hope for, then there is another way to get to that good that doesn't have that evil involved. God alone knows the end of the beginning and knows how to bring good from evil. It's the same thing you already said, same bullcrap answer. Uh, and then pff, some more quotes, some more Bible stuff, whatever. I'm done with this. And I'm moving on. Take